Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show today. I am extremely excited and proud to bring you something of a YouTube premiere. This is a brand that's never been reviewed or featured, to my understanding, on uh, YouTube. Uh, so uh, I'm very delighted to, to, to bring this uh, review to you today. And of course, before I get into it, I will do a quick wristwatch check. Summer hasn't officially started, although it has for me <laughs> because I'm wearing my Squally 1521. Definitely the ultimate summer watch, uh, as far as I'm concerned. That Azzurro just, oh, it, it, it brings that liveliness and, 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 and passion uh, that I um, associate with the Mediterranean and, and growing up in Italy, of course. So yeah, something fun, lively. Anyway, wristwatch check done. Let's talk a little bit about Laurier. And uh, Laurier was founded very recently, only in 2018 in February. Uh, and as and soon as I heard about the remarkable story behind the brand, I had to get it in. And of course, well, if you uh, haven't noticed, it's, uh, it's a vintage, deeply vintage inspired dive watch with a really classic look. Uh, that alone intrigued me. But when I heard the story about the, the brand itself, it's a husband and wife team. I believe they're actually by day teachers uh, down in Texas and their passion for vintage pieces manifested beautifully in, in, in this uh, new micro brand. And what is quite remarkable and astonishing is that they do everything themselves. They, they learnt illustrator, uh, photography and, and um, designing watches, which I, I have to say, if you've never designed a watch or never been involved in designing a watch, it is a mammoth undertaking. I know there's a lot of armchair watch makers out there that, that until you've done it, or until you've seen part of the process, it's, it's really worthy of respect. So the result was this, which is the Neptune, of course, named after the Roman god of fresh water and sea. The Greek equivalent would have been Poseidon, the Greek uh, mythological counterpart, of course. But being uh, half Roman myself, <laughs> I prefer Neptune. But anyway, so yeah, now there is, I believe, three versions of this watch. The third one is black without gilt. This first one here with uh, gilt dial and um, gold tone hands, then there's the blue with this ravishing, beautiful blue there. Blue one has the white printing on the dial and silver tone or stainless steel hands. So let's just get the basic specifications out of the way and then we'll um, get into the, uh, the nitty gritty of the review. The diameter is 39 millimeters. We got a height of just under 14, 13.7. Lug to lug is 48 millimeters. Then we got a lug width of 20 millimeters. So yes, finally, a diver in a sensible, uh, true to, to, to the vintage inspiration scale and size. And as you can imagine, uh, this is probably the first review in a long, long time. I'm not gonna complain about the size. It's fantastic in its proportions. I'm really, really excited. So the entire case is obviously 316L marine grade stainless steel. We have an aluminium insert uh, for the bezel. It's 120 click, unidirectional, very, very solid, hardly any play. So very pleased about that. Very nice alignment. We have a wonderfully domed plexiglass crystal. Uh, really true to form and, and nothing distorts and gives that vintage feeling like a plexiglass. We get a splendid mix of different polishing brushed on the sides and as you can see we do have drilled lug holes which is fantastic. This one certainly, actually both of them are going to be strap monsters I would imagine. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's changing out the strap is going to be a doddle. I can imagine with this vintage aesthetic on a, on a distressed collar ebb, oh, it's gonna look the kipper's knickers, it really is. So we have a very large screw-in uh, crown here, rather reminiscent of the Rolex 6538, threads very nicely. Now it comes on a stainless steel bracelet or a Admiralty Grey strap. I'm not sure if this comes included. Uh, I love the color grey, it's very, actually, hold on just a moment. This is a historically accurate uh, Phoenix mil spec um, NATO strap. So you can see the color is absolutely 
spot on. If you guys know your history of the NATO strap, the very first one was in Admiralty Grey. It is a one piece, uh, which is great because it keeps it a little bit thinner on the wrist and I think complements its vintage style absolutely perfectly. So not only historically accurate, but this is the amazing true details we get here. Astonishing attention to detail. It is stitched uh, with brushed hardware to match the brushing of the case. If we look at the bracelet, we get a wonderfully tapering bracelet, which is fantastic. I often complain that they don't taper. I think it continues the line and shape of the Lyre style lugs, very reminiscent of the 1957 Amiga uh, releases or the trilogy, if you remember. Wonderful beveling on the edge there. Very nicely done. The finishing is immaculate. Coin edge on that bezel for really good grip. Doesn't overhang. It keeps, you know, in, in line with the... Um, the case there, it's very nicely done. We get a double push button deployment there with the engraved logo uh, of Laurier, which is this kind of, um, I guess, uh, very military-esque. It's like the uh, insignia for a sergeant in the military, so I think that's really cool. Again, we have beveling there, nice contrasting finishes. And the, the, the bracelet itself, a little bit like the Speedmasters of, of the 50s, and rather impressive, we get actual solid end links. Not only that, no expense has been spared here. If we look at the, when I size this for my wrist, there you go, even screwed links, which is fantastic. We get two little micro adjustments. Unfortunately, no diver extension. Uh, but at least the construction is very solid. There's a little bit of play on the bracelet, but I think considering its price point, it's very, very solid. The dial is beautifully printed. The hands are very kind of Railmaster Amiga, in keeping with that 60s, 50s look beautifully. Very easy to distinguish the arrows from the minutes and even an arrow on the seconds there. Crisp, non patinaed loom. This is the BGW9 Superluminova. Very nice and responsive. We even get loom in the pip. I wasn't expecting that. Again, nice attention to detail. The markers are wonderfully symmetrical. We get no date. Very minimal in printing. We just get 200 meters. This is obviously a 200 meter water diver. The brand with automatic written just underneath it. I love the simplicity. Very nice balance. And the positioning of the markers. It all works wonderfully in relation to each other. And that gold tone print is magnificent. Very pleasing to look at indeed. And look at the distortions in that plexiglass. Just wonderful. You just can't replicate that at all. Very enjoyable. If we quickly look at the blue one, the blue here, it's more of a royal blue on the actual dial with a crisp white printing, a little bit more legible. Uh, and again, same layout, exactly the same. The dial is very uncluttered. It's a gorgeous and delightful balance of utility and clean design. The bezel insert plays nicely with the light. It moves from a, a quite a, a dark blue to a, to a radiant, almost neon blue at times. Very nice. I, I really like the selection here. This color scheme reminds me a little bit of my um, Tudor Submariner that I recently purchased. I think it's a, a very conservative blue. It's definitely going to be compatible with a lot of straps. Very nice way that the bezel sits there, just framing the, the, the glass perfectly. Uh, it's extremely satisfying. Um, I love it. If we quickly look at the back, we just get a plain uh, screw down case back with that radial uh, brushed finish there. Nothing uh, superfluous here. The crown itself is signed with sergeant insignia stripes of the brand logo there. So the movement inside is the Seiko made NH35A. Automatic of course, 24 joules, operates at a slower 21,600 vibrations an hour. It does have deer shock, a healthy 41 hour power reserve. Bidirectional winding, if we unscrew the crown and pull it out all the way, you can see the seconds has stopped, so it is hackable. And if we pop it back to the first position, we do get manual wind as well. This particular movement is one of the most 
popular automatic movements in pretty much every other uh, affordable micro brand. The accuracy out of the factory is a standard minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day. Uh, under normal conditions, I can happily report that I was getting about plus 12 out of these, which is absolutely fine. Of course, with regulation, you can get them performing uh, just as good as any high-end watch. They're very rugged, very affordable to maintain. You don't have the risk, the headaches, or the or, or the uh, the worry you do with uh, the vintage watches that these are obviously inspired by. This caliber is uh, an unbranded version of the 4R35, uh, which you'll find in you know next generation orange monsters, etc. Now these movements are renowned for their dependability. It's it, it's slower speed uh, means there's less friction on the moving parts. Robustness over time is boosted in that regard as well. So the question is, how do these bad boys wear? Well, let's pop it on the wrist and find out. Several moments later. And there we go. Now for my six and a quarter inch wrist, it is absolutely perfect. Very legible. I love the size and scale. Um, it's so refreshing not to complain about it being too large. I think for the larger chaps, it will be absolutely fine. If you're not used to wearing a slightly smaller watch, it will give you that vintage feel. It still does have a lot of presence, extremely comfortable uh, on the NATO strap especially. Its weight is about 76 grams on a NATO and 163 grams on the bracelet. The bracelet has a lovely articulation and fluidity to it. At first I was worried that it was a little bit flimsy, but I've got to be honest, it's uh, an absolute pleasure to wear. So really pleased with that. Let's discuss the positives and negatives. Well, first of all, I think it's incredible value for money. Whenever I review a micro brand, people will always say, the first thing is say, well, for, you know, for the same amount of money, I could get a Seiko this or a Seiko that or an Orient this. Well, of course you can. But you guys, you've got to remember, those are massive brands with huge facilities. They're able to produce watches very affordably because they have the infrastructure, they have the know-how, they have the machinery, they have the manpower. $400, which is the asking price, is <laughs> extremely competitive. The quality is there, the finishing, uh, it, it's impeccable. I could find no QC issues uh, with this. So in terms of bang per buck, it, it's, it's very difficult to beat. The design is absolutely spot on. You can certainly see why my attraction was immediate. In a way, I've been looking for something like this because there is a demand and they're meeting it with an unpretentious original watch. It certainly has the class, the elegance of the era it's uh, inspired by, without a shadow of a doubt. This is what is so great about micro brands. They have that personal touch. They're made not by committee, but by somebody that adores watches, that knows their stuff. One of the things that I find ultimately alluring about a watch like this is that you're getting something very unique that not necessarily everybody else has. It epitomizes everything that is what a good micro brand should do. If you're looking for something affordable to add to your collection for a bit of fun on the weekend or just an everyday solid watch, I think this is a superb option. And somehow, despite it being a modern contemporary watch, you do get, and I think mainly due to its scale, you get a bit of that James Bond, Sean Connery feel. You really do, I, I, I honestly. It exudes the coolness and sophistication of the 60s without a hefty price tag, which I think is priceless. It really does evoke that sense of adventure, which let's be honest, is what we all love primarily. One of the main things we love about a good dive watch. It plays tribute to many classic watches, which is always a good thing, but without um, directly copying one reference over another. You do have elements of the Rolex Big Crown Submariner, as I mentioned earlier, the 6538, mixed with some elements of classic 1957 Amiga trilogy. The hands are very Amiga. The bezel itself reminds me of the Super Ocean in, in the 1960s, all brought together very, very well. And I think with the popularity of, let's say, the Tudor uh, Black Bays, etc., this classic refined look, it will always be appealing. And the charm is there. You really feel the heart and soul 
of the designer in this. They they know their watches. You can tell this was made by somebody that adores uh, vintage watches especially. But you don't have the headache. You don't have any of the risk. You have uh, quite contemporary materials with the exception of the plexiglass, which I think uh, is a great thing. It, 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 yes, it's not as robust as the sapphire, but with some polywatch, you can buff it you know, like new again. Conservative colors will undoubtedly make them strap monsters. So the versatility, whether dressing up, dressing down, an everyday watch, perfect. Funnily enough, I've got to say, I've enjoyed this watch more than the Tudor Black Bay. I, you know, I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this, but this feels truer to, to, to vintage than even a Tudor. Um, it really does. I think it's ravishing to look at. Uh, it's alluring, it's appealing, it's fun, it's affordable. What more could I say? Uh, it, it's absolute pure class, it really is. So let's discuss the negatives. Well, I think the crown uh, juts out a little bit too much for my liking. Um, I think it could have been a tad thinner. I, I, I think the diameter of the crown is absolutely spot on. I just think it could have been a little bit smaller. I also think the lack of diver extension and the lack of uh, micro adjustments was a little bit tricky to get the, the right fit. But again, I keep thinking about the price and you know, I'm, I'm willing to forgive it. I'm willing to forgive it. Obviously you won't have that problem with the NATO strap. I would have loved to see an engraving on the case back. I think to see Neptune actually riding his hippocampus would have been amazing. But again, I understand keeping it at its price range. Yeah, it's it's asking a lot. I, I know what goes into to making a watch and it would have bumped up the price uh, quite drastically. My last little negative is the loom. You don't really get a good sense of orientation. Um, for example, there's no way to distinguish which of the triangles is the 12 o'clock. I'm a bit conflicted about saying this. It's not the end of the world, um, but it would have been nice just to have a slight differentiation, just to give a better sense of orientation. Very minor, very minor negatives indeed. I mean, this is an outstanding design. One possible negative is you could say that the, uh, the trend of vintage inspired watches is perhaps a little played out. Personally, I don't think so because uh, watches of the 50s and 60s tend to, well, that, that was the, the golden era, really. I mean, it's when so many of the iconic watches were born. What is fantastic is that this is no homage. This is entirely original, but at the same time, still embodying some of the most um, highly desired references that obviously cost you know an arm and a leg. I can't believe this is the price. I, it re I, my hat's off to them. And what is more impressive is that they still donate a portion of the proceeds when you buy one of these pieces to a charity organization that fights and protects the world's oceans. Very admirable. I mean, uh, I'm surprised they're gonna make any money with these watches whatsoever. But I'm very happy because I can finally recommend a, a suitable alternative to um, so many um, extremely expensive rare references. And actually, I think if you're considering a, a Tudor Black Bay but want something more affordable, this is a great option. Absolute pure class. I can't recommend this brand enough. I'm certainly considering buying this one, which is ridiculous because I'm on, a, as you guys know, I'm on, a, I'm trying to not buy any watches. Um, oh, and one last thing, I also got to say, I admire their packaging. It's very unpretentious. They, ha they come in this very nice uh, little leather pouch. Beautiful, really nice. Again, attention to detail, it's so important. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see where this brand goes next. I, I wish um, Laurier all the best and, and Lorenzo, thank you so much for contacting me and lending these in. Yeah, you've got another fan here. You've got, yeah, I'm definitely gonna bu be buying this one uh, uh, once my, um, my grail has been bought. God, if I can resist that long. But anyway, superb, absolutely superb. So I'm gonna leave it there. Please let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Uh, I'll leave all the details of the Laurier website and the Instagram and everything um, as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.